Very easy schedule according to FPI. Seventh easiest uh, according to Mike Clay. And obviously the division has the Bears and has the Lions. That's a portion of it. Then you get the NFC East, which has the Giants and the Eagles, depending on how you feel what's going to happen with the Commanders and, the, and even Dallas in that NFC least, which is affectionately known as. Uh, if we're going to talk Packers, we've got to talk Aaron Rodgers. And for that, I want to bring back Matthew Barry. Matthew, earlier you said uh, Josh Allen's your number one rated quarterback. What about Rodgers? How much are you downgrading him with the departure of Adams? Well, I'm downgrading him a little bit, and it's not just the departure of Donald Adams. Now, I shouldn't mention, mention this. In seven career games that Aaron Rodgers has not had Devontae Adams, he's averaging over 24 fantasy points per game. Super small sample size, but over the course of his career, he has managed to put up fantasy points without Devontae Adams. But that's games here or there where they can schedule. Now you're going through a whole season with not only no Devontae Adams, but no Marquez Valdez-Scantling. And, and Rodgers is a big trust guy. So you've got Alan Lazard, who has struggled to stay on the field throughout his NFL career. He's, he's had some injury issues. You, you've got Randall Cobb. You've got, you've got the, the rookie Christian Watson. So there's not a lot in the passing game. Uh, certainly it's a downgrade in terms of his weapons. We expect to be uh, even, even more run heavy this year with Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. And then you think about the schedule. They're on a bye in week 14. Think about fantasy, right? So week 14 is win and get in. That's the week before the fantasy playoffs. Look at that schedule right there. Week 14, you don't have Aaron Rodgers. And then week 15, you have to play the Rams, probably the toughest defense they'll play all season long. And so uh, to me, all those things bring him down to quarterback 10 for me. He was QB6 last year. He doesn't add a lot with his legs, as we talked about, Mike and I talked about earlier. That's so important in fantasy is to have those dual threat quarterbacks. My expectation is, look, Aaron Rodgers is still Aaron Rodgers in capital letters. And the fact that he can lose a player of Devontae Adams caliber and still be a top 10 fantasy quarterback is a credit to how brilliant he is. But certainly he's towards the lower tier of QB ones for me, given the schedule and given the losses in the offseason to his offense. Yeah, and the schedule so big, the nuances of that fantasy uh, stretch run of the regular season, the fantasy season. Now, remember, he went to Arizona last year. The odds adjusted because he was missing all his weapons, and it was surgical against the Cardinals. They get the win, although there was a miscommunication. Arizona surely could have won that game late. What about you? Uh, now that you see their schedule, how, what do you expect from Green Bay? General rule of thumb, bet on them in the regular season because it doesn't matter. Bet against them in the playoffs because it does matter because that's who the Packers are. But this season with a win total of 11, I would look to the under here. Not my favorite bet, but one I would play. First off, they won 13 games last year, but with a plus 79 point differential, that's more indicative of a 10-win team. So they over-exceeded expectation. They're going to come back to earth a bit. That schedule is not as easy as it looks. I want to take you through some tricky spots. Week three at Tampa Bay. That's Tampa Bay's first home game of the season because they open up with back-to-back -back road games. Place is going to be rocking. Week five against the Giants. That game's in London. The Giants are going to play three straight home games before they head over to London. Body clocks are going to be in better shape than Green Bay. Look at the following week against the Jets. Everyone can laugh about that game, but there's no extra time off coming off the London game. You're going to go to London, come back. The Jets are going to be there. You should beat them, but that game's not going to be as easy as it looks. Week eight against Buffalo, Bills are off the bye. Week 10 against Dallas, Cowboys are off the bye. Week 17 against Minnesota, late in the year, the Vikings have one extra day of rest <coughs> in that game because it's going to be a Saturday game, and the week before, Minnesota's playing on a Saturday, but Green Bay's playing on a Sunday. It looks easy, and if they get to 12, it's not going to shock anyone, but there are some tricky spots on that schedule. I would play under 11 wins. That's even, where I am right even now. Even in week one, they're only one-and-a-half-point favorites. Now, they're at Minnesota where they lost last year. It wouldn't be a huge surprise. Obviously, the Vikings are good, and especially at home, but these games... This isn't college football. Teams don't go undefeated. So you, it's important to recognize that when you're, ah, it's the Jets, automatic win. Oh, the Panthers. Teams don't go 0-16. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.